Hey, hey, welcome to Pianist Academy. I'm Charles Stepanek. What is the key that's most often first taught to beginner pianists? What hand position? What scale? What early harmony and theory? If you answered middle C or C major or C hand position, you'd be absolutely correct. C is by far the most often first discussed for beginner pianists, both young and old alike. The problem with this, it's the very opposite of how one of the most famous pianists in all of history taught their students. Chopin. Yes, I said Chopin, the incredible composer and pianist, but also teacher of probably some 150 students over the course of his career. And what did Chopin think of C major? Well, he thought it was the most difficult scale and key to play musically. Why? Let's take a look at C major. It's true that C major is simply all the white key. It doesn't venture into any of those intimidating black keys. It appears uniform. Everything is lined up nice and neatly, right? Middle C is relatively easy to find for first time pianists. They need to look near the name of the piano on the fallboard. And it does have some merit as an easier key on paper. But playing the piano doesn't really have anything to do with what's on paper. I mentioned how C is uniform. Well, that's great. But is our hand uniform? <laughs> Absolutely not. Every finger is a different length. The thumb bends at something like a 90 degree angle compared to the other fingers. On my own hand, my second and fourth fingers are nearly the same length, but those relative finger lengths vary from one person to the next, as do all finger lengths from person to person. Just compare your hand to someone else in your family or your friend's hand. You don't have to do much looking at all to find the differences. I mentioned how C is simple. It's just all the white keys. Well, <laughs> that's great too, but simple in that sense also means that there are no landmarks for us to see on the keyboard. There is no obvious division of the octave from C to B where the octave ends before it repeats. It's just seven white keys in a row. And if we took away the black keys, which is a lot like what can mentally happen in a beginner pianist's mind, they just don't see them, then good luck telling the difference from one note to the next note. So how can we fix this? Well, first off, black keys don't have to be intimidating at all. Much of what happens in early piano lessons is that approaching the black keys gets put off for so long that early pianists just become afraid of them, simply because they've been told they're harder or because they think, well, I need to get to lesson book whatever before I can tackle that and I'm only on lesson book one or lesson book two or, oh my gosh, that's so many sharps or flats. If we just change our approach and follow Chopin's own advice, we can learn our way around the keyboard much more quickly. And we can learn so much more about our own hands and bodies as we discover music. Now, once again, none of what I'm saying today is actually my opinion. This is straight from Chopin's own writing and the writings of his students. So how would Chopin teach scales? Well, he would not start with C. Instead, he would start with B major. Yes, five sharps, I know, five sharps and all that. But not only would he start with B major, but he would start with the second half of the scale first, the part of the scale that starts on E and goes up to B. And why? Well, just take a look at our hand position as we rest on these five notes. Our longest fingers, our second, third, and fourth fingers, sit comfortably on the group of three black keys. Our shortest fingers, our thumb and our fifth finger, also rest comfortably on the white keys E and B. In fact, our hand position here is nearly exactly the same as what our hand looks like at complete rest. So if I shake this out and leave my hand at rest here and drape it over the keys, we get this exact position. Very natural, very relaxed. So instead of teaching a C five finger position, maybe we should be teaching this five finger position in B major first. Now, left hand scales are thought to be a little trickier, but if we start by playing this B major position downward, we get that same nice five finger position that fits the hand comfortably, just like this. The longest fingers on the three black keys, shortest fingers on B and E, right? Now, another benefit of starting with B major, if we look at the complete scale starting on B, there are two white keys that become important landmarks for us to keep track of, the B and the E. Each time we play one of these landmark keys, it's played by the thumb. And when we get to the top of our scale, we simply use the fifth finger. How can we remember these landmark keys? They're the only two white keys in the scale and they're interrupted by groups of black keys. 
So here's our next group. Landmark. Group of black keys. Landmark. Group of black keys. Landmark. Right? So every time we play a B major scale ascending, we simply get to the end of the group of black keys, put the thumb on the next landmark note. Play the next group of black keys, put the thumb on the next landmark note. Now this is also true in the left hand if we play downward first. So here we go. If we play the left hand starting on B, we play the group of black keys, get to our landmark note, it's played with the thumb. Play the group of black keys, landmark note. Next group of black keys, landmark note. Next group of black keys. Now, when we finish the B major scale downward, we learn that the fourth finger is just the next finger in line to play a note. Now, it's not so weird that B major left hand starts on the fourth finger, right? If we learn it downward first, it makes a whole lot of sense. It's just, it's just the next finger in line. So now we have a context, right? It's not just out of the blue that B major starts on the fourth finger, right? Students all the time, they're used to starting scales that start on five in the left hand, that becomes normal for them. And then anything that doesn't start on five is this challenge or it's awkward or it's intimidating, right? But all we need to remember as we play the B major scale downwards, we end on four. When we play it upwards, we start on four. That's one great way to remember why the B major scale starts on the fourth finger and not the fifth finger. Okay, you want another benefit of B major? Here you go. Teaching the thumb to cross under the hand or the hand to cross over the thumb is always a challenge. If we look back at C, we're now starting to see a whole bunch of issues arising, right? And we can now also recognize a thumb crossing issue. How many times? Do new students get to the point where they're supposed to cross the thumb and lift their wrist way too high in an awkward way just to try to make room for what the thumb has to do? How many times do students get to where they're supposed to cross the thumb and throw their elbow way out just to facilitate getting the thumb around? How many times do students get to the point where they need to cross to the thumb and they simply forget because there's no landmark. It's all just the white keys. All of that gets fixed in B major. So as we start the scale in B, our second and third fingers immediately have the entire hand in a natural position further above the keys, right? We're further toward the fallboard too, so thumb and fifth finger are, can freely play any notes. We don't have to do anything weird. Hand is naturally raised. We get to the point where we cross to the thumb and it's so simple. There's a little bit of thumb bend, maybe a little bit of wrist motion, but nothing like like what you see with the wrist flying up or the elbow flying out. It's so much simpler and it feels so much more natural, right? The other benefit, because we got to the end of the group of two black keys, we have a cue that the thumb plays the next note, right? We get to the next end of the group of black keys, the thumb plays the next note. No more forgetting where the cross happens, going up or coming down, right? B major solves all of those problems. And one more thing, for extra practice, both crossing the thumb and the hand around the keyboard, but also finding the landmark white keys, if that's a little bit of an issue, B major is perfect to turn into a scale where we can group all of our black keys together. So watch this, we can start the scale with our thumb and we can play the next group of black keys together as a cluster. We can play the thumb, we can play the next group of black keys together as a cluster and continue all the way. And now we're blocking or clustering or grouping or clumping all of the long fingers notes together and showing exactly where the thumb crosses. Same thing goes with the left hand. So there you go. Don't learn or teach C major first, but follow Chopin's advice and start with B major followed by D flat major and by G flat major. Those are keys that still fit the hand naturally. They feel very easy to play. You're gonna build a lot more confidence at the keyboard more quickly. Sharps and flats and black keys, they're not gonna be intimidating at all, right? Because we're playing a whole bunch of them. And we're finding out that they're easy. They're even easier than playing the white keys. And you're gonna to begin to learn to see patterns in the keyboard and in music, something that's gonna prove extremely important as study continues. Okay, that's it for today. I hope these ideas have been helpful to you. Be sure to click that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and ding the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. And remember, practice smarter, not harder, and I'll see you next time you visit Pianist Academy.